Okay. F first of all, sorry for my really bad English. I hope you understand me. I you sound fine to me. I translated all questions via, via Google, and I hope Google made a great job. <laughs> okay. You see, your English sounds fine to me, so no problems. Okay. Thank you for your time, first of all. And I know you as a guitarist of Whitesnake, as a guitarist of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and of course, as uh, the, the mastermind of Joel Hoekstra's 13. For me, you are the greatest guitarist in the world. Um, you're probably a busy musician, but uh, the question is, do you still want to pick up the guitar at home in your free time? Um, I don't know the answer to that because I don't have a lot of free time. I mean, I, I one thing that I tend to do is schedule myself out with music that making a living kind of has me on it no matter what a good amount of the time so um yeah i mean there's 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 times that could be considered free time but i end up sort of scheduling things in there like you know going well i also want to achieve this during this time so i mean i i pick it up voluntarily um, I don't often sit around and noodle with no purpose whatsoever. Okay. Um, I, I read uh, in the internet that you started with classical instruments. Do you still play those instruments? Or No, I mean, I, I play a little bit of piano, you know, but uh, I, the cello thing, that was just, I was really young. <laughs> and uh but i i can you know i know my chords and scales on piano and things like that but not i'm not great on keyboards um but no i just pretty much fixate on guitar <laughs> can you tell how, how how it came that you changed from classical to rock um yeah i mean that was uh just basically hearing ACDC back in black and seeing them on MTV when they um, when MTV first started here in the in the US. They didn't have a lot of videos on back then. They sort of took like five or six videos and played them all day. And one of them was ACDC. And so I saw Angus and I said, that's the coolest guy I've ever seen in my life. I want to be like him. <laughs> I, I, I read in, in 2008, you, you entered uh, Night Ranger. And I know Night Ranger from the 80s with, with the song uh, Sister Christian. And I read on Wikipedia that uh, Rob Beach was also a part of, of Night Ranger. Do you know him from this time? Yeah, that's... Reb needed to miss a show with Night Ranger and... I had known Kelly Kagi, their drummer, from playing when I played with Jim Peterick's World Stage Band. And Kelly was a musical guest on that. So we would play a few of the Night Ranger hits. So we'd see each other like once a year for like seven years or something like that. And then they needed to um, find someone to fill in for Reb. So a lot of people don't know that Reb was in there in that year between Jeff Watson and myself, but Reb did about a year of Night Ranger. And uh, so they put me with Reb to talk about some of the ins and outs of what parts he was playing, et cetera. So we kind of met there. And um, and then, you know, we, we kept in touch. Like I played with Big Brother and the Holding Company in between that time after I had filled in, I think, with Night Ranger. And I told Reb I was going to be at this a uh, place in Pittsburgh that he hangs out at a lot. And so Rev came down and hung out. And um, so we, we got to know each other a little bit before my time in Whitesnake. And of course, then once I was in Night Ranger, Winger and Night Ranger ended up on some bills together. Okay. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> and and, and a second thing about Night Ranger, I, I read in 2011, you toured with Night Ranger and played in two bands at the same concert, uh, Night Ranger and Foreigner. Can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, um, after we had, we were out on tour together, it was Night Ranger, Foreigner and Journey. 
So it was a really big shed tour. We were drawing record numbers. Don't Stop Believing was just huge at that point in time. We were over 20,000 people a night on that tour. And um, it was after we played Jones Beach in New York, and I live in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next show was going to be in Virginia Beach. So my plan was to hang at home and then fly the morning of the show to Virginia Beach. I was going to go play at Rock of Ages, the the Broadway show that mm -hmm. I was playing guitar in at that time, too. So I said, I'll take one day at home, go play Rock of Ages, and I'll fly down to the Virginia Beach, like, you know, at 6 a.m. or whatever, the the day of the show. So, uh, but Phil Carson called me, like, after the Joan, Jones Beach show, Foreigner's manager, and said... Um, you know, Mick isn't feeling that great. I might need you to start taking a look at the set. But it was really kind of like phrased very casually and like maybe. And so I was like, OK, you know, he told me to call Jeff Pilsen the next day. <laughs> and uh, I called Jeff, but kind of late because I didn't realize it was pressing. So I called Jeff. I feel like it was like afternoon even or something like maybe around noon or 1 p.m. and Okay. He said, oh, you don't you haven't heard. He's like, you're on tomorrow. And I said, get me a, a board tape like right now so I can start working on it. So I only really had a day to um, get foreigners set together. And then obviously I, I took off of Rock of Ages instead of going <laughs> in to play that show. Just basically stayed up all night working on foreigner, barely slept, flew down to Virginia Beach and went on. The, the hardest part was going on with Night Ranger right before I was going on with Foreigner because I was like, man, I just learned this set in like a day and I hope it's going to be there. You know, it was like I was on stage with Night Ranger sort of stressing about the mm -hmm. fact that I was going to be coming right back out. Um, but, yeah, that was the deal. So and, and that lasted for a while, I think, you know, a couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that. I don't know. Cool. Um, and in 2014, you joined my absolute favorite band, Whitesnake. Uh, how was that step for you? Yeah, good. I At first, um, when Doug left, I sent some video links to Reb, and I asked if I could get an audition, if he could pass it on to David. And uh, he did, and I didn't hear anything at first. And then I just thought, come on, I got to be able to get an audition. Who would know David? And I happen to think of the same person, Phil Carson, Foreigner's manager, because Phil mm -hmm. is British. And I thought, I bet they know each other from back in the day. Phil's a legendary manager. So uh, Phil wrote an email to David. And sure enough, that got me my audition. And David and I really clicked and, and hit it off. And that went well. And I was offered the gig. Cool. Um, and and I, I read that you have... Uh, some Les Paul guitars, especially for for White Snake with 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 the White Snake is it logo. Is it the correct word? Yeah, yeah. When I joined the band, I just I kind of wanted to. My main guitar has always been a gold top, and I was kind of filling Doug Aldrich's shoes to a degree. Um, and Doug was kind of known for playing a gold top, so I thought maybe look wise that was a bad idea, like stepping out with a gold top with the blonde hair and everybody would say, you know, think, oh, you know, he's oh. trying to be Doug or whatever, which, you know, Doug and I play really, you know, different, a lot different than each other. And But I, I love Doug. You know, he's a great guy and an amazing guitar player. Um, but I just kind of want a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So um, also I've been using the gold top in Night Ranger. So um, I contacted Gibson and I had these medallions made at a mint with the mm -hmm. white snake uh, mm -hmm. logo on them. And I had that um, embedded, the WS that you see like on the front of the 87 album, et cetera, yeah. pretty much album, any album following thereafter. Um, but uh, I had those Gibson embed those in the body and then they added a snake stencil on the top and then Fender did the same for me because we were doing the purple album and I thought I might end up playing some Strat, um, you know, Richie Blackmore esque uh -huh. or something. So uh, Fender did the same for me and then Atomic Guitars came up with the idea of a Swarovski crystal uh, purple because uh -huh. of the purple album, uh, purple crystal top Les Paul style guitar. Um, yeah. with a gold WS um, also in crystal on the, the 
the top. So yeah, I ended up going in with like five guitars just for the gig. So <laughs> got overdid it a little bit, but um, you know, great fun and uh, really awesome to have those in my collection. Um, do you? Um, I play guitar too. Um, for me, uh, it's the best thing to use a, a modeling amp. Do you play something like this? I play a, a Line Six Helix. It depends on the gig. Um, right now, I'm in rehearsals for Trans Siberian Orchestra and about to leave on that tour. And with that, I use Fractal Axe Effects. And uh, uh, with White Snake real amps, I uh, use uh, Friedman, um, the B100 heads. Mm -hmm. And I use uh, actually a Fractal, but not for modeling, just for effects. I actually like the Fractal effects. I like the delay and the reverbs in those. And so, um, I use that just for the effects with White Snake, not amp modeling. And then um, with Share, I was they were ready to go from just doing the residencies in Vegas to taking it around, like going down to Australia and things like that. So um, part of the task was to take Dave Barry, who'd been her longtime guitarist, and kind of. Um, Ma, like try and get his sounds onto a fractal he was using a, a friedman runt head and a big pedal board and um so that was an interesting project just taking like an ab switch and going back and forth and trying to build all of his sounds in a fractal was kind of a an interesting challenge and so i ended up really using his amp for part of that and then um his setup and then transitioning over to fractal with that as well. One last question for uh, about White Snake. Um, in 2022, the the White Snake tour was was cancelled due David's heels problems. Um, I thought that this will be the end of White Snake, and now um, I think two weeks ago David Coverdale gave an interview and reported. That White Snake is still around, and there will be a new album. Can you tell something to that? I mean, not really, because I only really know as much as you do with that. I'm in constant contact with David, but it's always kind of like humor and fun, and uh, we don't necessarily uh, press on details about these things. I just kind of wait for David to give us the word on what he wants. Um, I know we talked about having me uh, come out after this tour, for a while and spend some time together what that's going to be i couldn't tell you you know okay. uh but i think that's a great idea um i would i think that would be a nice um thing to be a part of that with a lot of the past members whoever mm -hmm. is willing and whoever is welcome etc to um do that there's been a lot of uh really talented musicians in white snake and mm -hmm. you know i'm just honored to be on the list so i think that would be great um I'd love to work with all those guys, you know? Um, mm. So, yeah, I mean, if that happens, that's great. Um, I don't know, though. I, I I honestly don't know anything more than you do about that. <laughs> um, I, I found uh, your, your, I'm not sure, is, is it correct to say your, your project or is it a band, Joel Hoekstra 13? I mean, you know, I consider it a project mainly because in fairness to those guys, I do all the writing on it. So I, I take that opportunity to be the person that writes the lyrics and the vocal melodies as well as the riffs. And um, I think if it was a band, all those guys would probably want to be writing the songs, et cetera, mm -hmm. with me. And it's just my opportunity to just for a minute be the boss, so to speak, and like have the say so on on the songwriting and um, oversee the mix and kind of sign off on that and the artwork, et cetera. So I consider it to be my rock side project. Okay. Um, I, I told friends that I will do the Zoom thing with you and they wrote me questions that I uh, shall ask you. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Does it happen to you of sometimes uh, that the pick falls out of your hand? Um, no, not really. There's that, there's one video that kind of gets a lot of footage right now with, uh, 
burn where Reb had kind of gone down and gotten sick first on that tour. Um, and so I ended up having kind of last minute to cover Reb solos too. So I was playing Reb solo and trying to transition into mine. And it was like one of those moments where the pick, like, you know, I was tapping <laughs> and the pick went flying and I was like, Oh, I have, luckily I have one in my pocket. I'm just going to reach for that. So I saw that that video of course got a lot of views, but no, not really. It doesn't happen too often. <laughs> Um, next question. Is it true that white snake are Christian? That white snake is a Christian band. Uh, I, I think that, that that's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I couldn't tell you what everybody's individual, uh, spiritual beliefs are or practices offhand, you know, I mean, um, I just think collectively we're probably um, a lot more about music and humor tends to be, you know, when we're not working on music, we're usually just having fun and uh, joking around a lot. You know, yeah. um, everybody's really funny in the band. You know, we got a lot of really uh, witty people in the band. You know, Reb is a really funny guy and uh, Tommy Aldridge is a really witty guy. David's extremely witty. Um, you know, it's, uh, something that's funny because he's so regal and uh you know noble but at the same time david's a, a lot of laughs and uh, a lot of fun to be around so um yeah i i, I don't know i guess is my answer to that. <laughs> I, i don't i i i think you know why i could safely say we're not labeled as a christian band i don't i really don't know what everybody's beliefs are. <laughs> um next question is Do you still go to concerts as a normal visitor? Um, not so much. I mean, I find that most of the time when I go to see somebody live, I enjoy it for like a little bit, a few songs, and then I just kind of get a little antsy. Um, I spend a lot of time working on music, so I'm not the greatest um listener to like newer bands and things like that. And that's putting it mildly. Like I'm you know, always working on something right before the interview. I just laid down a solo for somebody. I'm teaching a few lessons today and this is my day off after being at TSO rehearsals and running the show a couple times a day and working on other production moments and warming up. And so I tend to play a lot of guitar and work on music a lot. So typically when I get downtime or free time, it's not spent um, with music. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, you have certainly been here in Germany for a few times. Have you ever been here in the Bavarian mountains? Um, you know, I, I don't know that I can necessarily answer that. I don't know where I am half of the time when I'm over there. I know what cities we're playing, et cetera. Yeah. But as far as the geography of that, I don't know. I mean, I was just over there with Brandon Gibbs, uh, doing an acoustic duo tour, um, really kind of right before Trans-Siberian Orchestra rehearsals. So uh, we got around and did that. And of course, I played Germany quite a bit um, with Whitesnake uh -huh. in my in the band. So yeah. I but I kind of terrible about knowing like where I'm playing. And I believe I was also in Germany with Cher. So, um, you know, I've played Germany quite a bit, but I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Um, do you still make mistakes with the guitar on stage from time to time i think oh yeah of course i think everybody does you know it's just hopefully they're not too bad yeah. <laughs> but I, i mean uh, there's always things that i wish i could have played smoother or better um yeah. that's part of the nature of playing live you know but it's also part of the beauty of it is that it's real and human okay uh one last thing um You probably don't remember, but uh, I think it was 2020, you announced my album and my tour <laughs> as a cameo gig uh, on, 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 a, on a platform, Cameo. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, right on. Yeah, I mean, Cameo is something that I started doing during COVID, you know, because yeah. we were all just kind of stuck at home. And um, I just thought, like, 
that might be a good way to kind of stay in contact with people. And also, you know, I, I got an awful lot of inboxes for people asking me to wish people a happy birthday and things mm -hmm. like that. And I thought, you know, this is probably something I should get a little bit more organized and just have it on a single platform where people can go and they know that they can have me do so. So, okay. um, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of cameos in the last, really since 2020, I think I signed up for it. So um, the last few years, it's countless. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many of them I've done. So, <laughs> a lot. Uh, do, do you know when, when you will be in Germany with TOA? Um, you know, TSO is not going to probably tour Germany anytime soon is predominantly just like a North American thing. And um, there's been a couple times where it has toured Europe, but they usually use the core members for that. The people from the band Sabotage that this band is based upon. Mm -hmm. um, the way that worked is, you know, Sabotage was the core of this. And as mm -hmm. it became more popular in the States, they kind of took that and split those members two ways. So we could cover the U S in the holiday period we have a West band and an East band. And then there's people like myself that are kind of um, brought in to um, round out the band, so to speak. So I'm not necessarily like a, a core member, although I've, I've been here like 12, 13 years now. So I'm definitely a veteran and they expect to see me and, you know, just try and do the best I can for them. Okay. That, that were all questions I, I wrote. I, I, It's my first interview on, on Zoom and I didn't know uh, uh, to, to plan the time to plan the 30 minutes. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm, I'm glad, you know, uh, glad we, you know, were able to do this and get you started with it. So hopefully you'll get some other guests from here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and sorry for, for, the, for the mistake with the time to start. Uh, I googled uh, what time is it in Nebraska. And, yeah. And Google told me. No, no worries, man. It all worked out. So no worries at all. All good. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank time. you. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody. It's Joel Hooks from Whitesnake here. Doc is touring with his new band in July and August 2021 in South Germany. In summer, he'll start a YouTube rock vlog and the CD Burn will be released. Stay tuned on Doc-Fetzer.com. Rock on.